it's here. Normally, I don't do unboxings on this channel, but come on, this is a special occasion. But before I get into that, a couple of very quick things. For one thing, this video is going to be a little unstructured. This is going into it from the perspective of a hardcore circuit user and my kind of experience seeing the new upgraded version. And I'm going to do a much more in-depth proper review as soon as I get my head around this thing. The other thing is I want to say thank you so much for all the support you guys have given me over the past few days. Uh, everyone flooding Novation's comments, uh, trying to get them to send me one. Uh, they were always planning to send me one. It was just a matter of when, not if. But once again, I really appreciate how supportive y'all have been. I didn't realize that this many people genuinely cared about uh, this channel and me making stuff with groove boxes. So thank you so much. So without any further ado, let's open this thing up. All right. So as far as I know, this is like one of the proper units, not like a demo unit. Oh. Dang, it's super thin, which is definitely a change from the original. This is like synth ASMR. Here are all of the inputs and outputs. We are going to get into that in a second. Safety instructions. USB-C. I am really glad to see Novation jumping on the USB-C hype train. I think this is the future and the present for that matter when it comes to both consumer and professional tech. So it's great to see that implemented here. And then I think this is probably a power adapter of some sort. <laughs> a bunch of power adapters of some sort. Okay, so let's do this. All right, let's turn this on for the first time. And I've got this plugged into my audio interface. Feels really good to use. It's got the clicky buttons, which I was initially a little skeptical about because it's like <laughs> not particularly quiet, but I will say it is satisfying. Go to preset. Pads feel very good. Like the pads on the original already felt pretty good, but these are a little sturdier. All right, so let's go ahead and start a new project. Let's just try to build something from scratch here. Just mess around until I come up with something. Choose a different preset, maybe. That will do. Uh, what tempo are I? I think we're at 120 by default. Turn on the click. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. So how do you get the pattern to double in length? Because that's a really nice setting. That is uh, something that was sorely missing because okay, so that's reverse. Oh, that's ping pong. That's fun. That's uh, random. So that's got to be nice because, yeah, one issue with the original circuit is that you couldn't um, have a note go on for too long unless you wanted to reduce the tempo of the entire beat. Now, Novation's figured out a way around that by letting you set whether the pattern plays at like a normal speed or whether it goes like halftime or whatnot, which is super nice. Nice. So this just stays held down the entire time. That's nice. That's a marginal change, seemingly, but it does make a big difference. Same effect unit as before. Maybe I'll send that up an octave. So that's a noise oscillator in the case of this preset. That'll do. Ooh. So 
So let's try to get a maybe a couple of patterns going. Just chain these four, go from there. So a lot of this is quite similar in terms of like the workflow, which is a relief, but it's definitely got some differences that are going to take some getting used to. Off to a good start. Let me go ahead and double tap to save. And you better bet that I will be loading in my own samples going forward. I can't decide if this sound is cool or kind of gross. Maybe a little of both. So for these drums, filter envelope. So that's really just envelope, envelope. Resonance is now distortion. That's the EQ. So, same controls as previous. Maybe I'd distort this some more, shorten it a bit. So this is, so far, in terms of the experience, just using it self-contained, very similar to the original, just it feels a lot like a uh, fancier, it feels a lot more premium. And, um... Like, we're going to get into plugging in some external synths in a bit here, and that's going to, like, take this entirely to the next level, but I just want to get my head around uh, how this works just in the unit itself. So here's one thing that is going to take some getting used to, is this little back and forth. I wonder if there's a quicker way to do this. If there is, and you already know about it, let me know in the comments. In terms of the little dance between controlling parameters of each drum track and keeping this expanded note window open... Remember, kids, your hi-hats, always too loud. And your kicks? Well, your kicks are probably too loud, too, but I'm going to turn it up anyway. Let's just stick with these three, and I'm going to do something a little different with this fourth drum track, and we will get back to that. So I'm just going to uh, chain together a few patterns. Oh, and they made these patterns, like, properly independent. Nice! You love to see it. Right. Maybe that kick is a little loud. Uh, shift sidechain. Or we could double tap, I'm assuming. I'm assuming this is for both synth tracks, and then this takes you to... Uh, I'm guessing this is for the MIDI tracks. So let's just test that theory out. It's a bit much. They definitely went for it with the sidechain here. Some people are not going to like that. Uh, I'm fine with it. That'll do. Maybe that kick is a bit loud on second thought. I should turn the click off. And uh, we've got all our scenes here. I'm going to come back to that because I'm not even done building the beat up yet. What I want to try for this one is to use sample flip and probability to create a little bit of controlled chaos. So let's try to figure out how to do that. So I've got a window of a bunch of sounds I can choose from. That's neat. <laughs> So let's just see if I can send these. Right now I'm doing this basically with no regard as to like what even makes sense. Ooh. Okay, so uh, right now that sounds like hot garbage, but that is okay. So I just want this one to go. Let me actually mute everything else so I can give this my full focus. So that's already pretty cool by itself. You could have done this on the original circuit. It would have just taken a lot longer to set up. But now what I want to do is play around with the uh, probability. Shift. So... This is the probability for each step. This is basically exactly like velocity on the OG. So let's just give this dude like a probability of not that much. I'm just doing this completely at random. And we're just going to see how that sounds. This is a total experiment. 
as is pretty much this entire video. So we're going to get somewhat randomized grooves every single time that this loops, which will be neat. Maybe jump into a little bit of panning. Oh, that's kind of banging. Okay, next up, I'm going to try to assign uh, some scenes here, set up a little arrangement. I did a quick look at the manual. Let's do a bit of pattern chaining. So this dude, this dude, this dude. So if I go to Mixer, I hold Shift down. Oh, and then we say, I would like to put this there. So now, that's just like the default scene. Go back over here. That is the actual scene that we want like. And you can still do project switching as well, which is one of my absolute favorite features of the circuit. It has unlocked a ton of creativity for me, so I'm really glad that they've preserved that here, but just given like an intermediate way to deal with that, especially because patterns are ever so slightly more clunky, but they seem to have prepared for that well. So here's one thing I've been wanting to try. Let me pull up a blank pattern. And let me just uh, program in like a little ARP part of something. Just uh, arbitrarily. Not going to win any awards for creativity, but whatever. Here's what I wanted to get at with this. I wanted to see if I can just duplicate this into one of the MIDI tracks and just kind of like store it for later. And this would mean I could adopt kind of a hybrid workflow where it's like I'll make beats on the go, like in a cafe or on the couch or something. Do that. Uh, come up with four instrument parts and then just kind of shove two of them onto the MIDI tracks and then record a proper jam at a later date in my studio, aka my bedroom, with a table in it. I will be right back. I'm going to hook in the Micro Freak and see if I can't get that to work. All right, so a bunch of cables and a little bit of troubleshooting later, I finally got the Micro Freak talking with the circuit. Uh, pro tip here, each track has its own MIDI channel. So this is MIDI channel one, MIDI channel two, MIDI channel three, MIDI channel four. But if you want the correct MIDI channel to be uh, sent to the Micro Freak, you've got to go to utility. I know you can't see the screen and then choose MIDI and then you can choose input channel and make sure that it's the correct one. In this case, I've set it to channel three, AKA MIDI one. And now it's, uh, it's working. It's really cool. So uh, let's uh, engage in the true test. Send it through the side chain. Awesome. And also this means we can actually add effects to the Micro Freak as well without having to do anything extra. Let's take this even further. Uh, do a bit of panning. Uh, that is just incredibly cool and very powerful because like some people wished that they had added like an arpeggiator into here or something like a chord mode where you hit one pad and it plays an entire chord by having the micro freak you now have both of these things because the micro freak has its own built-in arpeggiator and there's a chord oscillator that you can have a lot of control over so just by bringing in this synth you get that obviously it's not completely portable not in the way that something like the uh, mc101 is i'm going to do an entire video uh, comparing this and the mc101 but still that is very cool, and that unlocks a whole new dimension of the Micro Freak. So, all 
right, that is as far as I want to take it for this video, but be aware that I have barely scratched the surface of what this thing is capable of and all of the improvements Novation has made. So expect a lot more videos featuring this thing in the coming weeks, uh, tutorials, beat making videos, uh, a review, all that kind of stuff. If you'd like to see my coverage of the announcement of this and the upcoming Novation Circuit Rhythm, you can click or tap up over here and be sure to subscribe right over here and turn on notifications so that you don't miss anything as I get into this device and also continue making more videos on other stuff as well. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back with a new video in a little bit.